Welcome back everybody, this is Eric here with Guitar Arsenal and today we're going to do a little bit of playing around and we're going to go over a commonly asked question that is probably asked all around the internet on different forums, not to mention on YouTube and various places and I've gotten it a few times myself. You know, we only started to recently do guitar videos on YouTube. Uh, guitar Arsenal as a channel has only been around at this point for a couple of months now, but one question that I keep uh, seeing people come up with as they go, hey, well, how do I know what kind of effects to choose? You know, I'm, go I'm running into a Super Reverb Direct, I got my guitar, everything's sounding cool. Okay, well, where do I take that to the next step? Like, where do effects come into play with the guitar, right? I mean, if you're just content with plugging straight into amp and going for it, great, fine, right? Whatever. But a lot of people want to get into these crazy sounds that they hear and they want to know where the sounds are coming from, what they do, what makes the sound, and I think that I want to make this video to sort of let some of the newbies discover a way that they can really understand what kind of effects they're talking and what they do. So I'm going to go through, this is sort of an effect primer. Uh, we're going to go over delays and modulations and things of that nature first, and then I'm going to redo my board and we'll just grab some various uh, distortions and things like that. So basically what an effects pedal does is it changes some parameter of your signal whether it's a reverb or delay uh, that can be set up as wild or as simple as you want to a compression that is given to your guitar through the form of a distortion or over overdrive or something like that. Modulations are kind of their own little animal. We are going to talk a little bit about them. You've got phasers, uh, choruses, things of that nature. Then you have just simple things like mono uh, volume pedals, wah pedals, and they all have their own little place and things like that. So we're going to go through and I'm going to demonstrate what these different pedals do. Uh, and I'm not going to really change any major settings. I just want to give you an idea of uh, what they do. And I'm going to give you a little bit of my philosophy on what I think uh, a pedal should be used for in a certain setting and what it may be able to help you with, okay? Um, most guitarists, uh, when it comes down to effects pedals, I would say most guitarists tend to go to some form of an overdrive or distortion first. They hear those heavy, crazy sounds that they hear on the radio or in a, in a popular rock song or something, and they want something that can push the front end of the amp and give it a lot more uh, compression and a lot more drive, right? Some dirt. Uh, that super is really nice. <laughs> nice in its own regard but you might want to add a little bit of something so first we'll talk about compressors I have a, uh, a full video on this compressor if you want to check it out but this is a CS2 it's an older boss unit what a compressor does is a compressor takes low and high parts out of your signal and uni unifies it into one uniform signal and it also provides a lot of sustain and gives the notes almost an overdrive-like compression, but while keeping the cleanness. I'm going to try to demonstrate that. So here is a lick without a compressor. With the compressor. Without with you get a little bit of edge you can set it up as kind of a bit of a boost which is kind of cool or it can just be what they call unity game where you're not really get losing or gaining anything but setting it unity game with the front end of the amp right now it's set up to give a negligible boost uh, to the signal so if you were playing in a country band a lot of country players use compressors because you're not really getting any like added drive sound, but it will add some compression to really help those notes bounce off the neck. That's compressors in a nutshell. You have phasers. Phasers have a sound similar to this. Yeah. 
Okay, can you get that sort of sound? You've got choruses. What a chorus basically does, it's, a chorus is essentially a tiny, tiny, tiny little delay. And what it does is it takes your signal and they're almost the same, but they're not quite. So what that does is it gives it the chorusing effect. That's why 12 strings have that kind of big washy sound because you have basically a lot of times a 12 string, the two strings are, I mean, yeah, you can tune them perfectly, but they'll have that almost slightly out of tune sound because you've got a high frequency and a low frequency and they're so close to each other, especially as you, as you have the different nuance of your picking attack, you can kind of push some of those strings out of tune slightly depending on how strong your hand is on the picking and it can give them a very washy, open kind of sound, okay? What a chorus pedal does is it is going to basically provide you an adjustment to add that in there. So it's going to sound something sort of like this. Let me turn that up to get into a little bit more intensity to give you an idea of how kind of warbly a chorus can also sound. That is a Wazacraft uh, CE2 chorus. Choruses are used a lot in like 80s music. Uh, you, you'll, if you listen to a lot of the 80s recordings and the cleans uh, in a lot of 80s tunes, you'll hear the chorus effect. Um, and it has its uses and can obviously be manipulated in a wide variety of different fashions, but there's a chorus. We have reverbs. Reverb pedals typically can kind of fall into a few different categories. With reverbs, you're going to run into reverbs that are super simple, like, you know, such as um, Electro Harmonix makes their uh, pedal called Holy Grail, and it's basically just a simple reverb, one knob, super, super simple. Or in this case, we've got a uh, Keeley Abbey Chamber reverb, and has some adjustable parameters, such as a blend switch. Uh, we've got a Brilliance switch, which can get, give you some, you know, different sounds, as well as uh, your pre delay and your decay. So you can really dial in the perfect reverb for you, but a reverb is handy to add if you've got an amp that has no reverb on board and is a super dry amp, you can add a little bit of ambient sound depending on how you set it up. So reverbs can add a, just a bit of echo. Essentially all reverb is is an echo 
but that doesn't quite get into the repeats that a delay pedal does. Delay pedals and reverbs are not that different from each other. It's just what their intended purpose is and what they're really, in, you know, going to do. For some of the short, spanky sort of rhythm stuff, all right, if I leave that reverb engaged, I've got it set up relatively what we call wet, okay? You got that bit of kickback, that slap back there. That's almost in delay territory the way that I've got this reverb set up. So if you listen to the next pedal, let's go to a digital delay. This is an old Boss TD DD2. All right, this is going to have a slightly longer repeat, but I'm going to let you hear the difference. Abby? Hear the difference? There's not quite as many repeats in there. The delay is an abrupt sound and a tail off. Uh, the reverb, rather. The delay has... The, the initial echo, and then it tails off. And of course, all those parameters can be set. So with delay pedals, you have a couple of different styles of delay pedals. You have digital delays and you have analog delays. I have both to show you. This is an old digital unit. This is a Boss DD2, which is an excellent unit. I use it for more of your kind of rockabilly sounding things. If you want to get into, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Floppy, but you get the point. All right, an analog delay. Basically, analog and digital are two different animals. Okay, an analog delay is much warmer. Uh, and I'm not trying to get into every little nut and bolt on these pedals, guys. I'm trying to show you what the difference is in, the, in what they do and how they sound. I have my delay pedals on my board generally set up for a couple of different things. On my digital delay, it's set up more for slapback. <laughs> The warmer delay is set up more for a long echo, which would be more appropriate for leads or things where you just want a more kind of ethereal lead or maybe even just an ambient sound added onto the chords. And that sounds something sort of like this. on the chords I can or if I want to add some compression now let's just pretend that we're not worried about distortion but say I add the compressor on top of that long warm sounding analog delay and get some compression for my lead stuff I can get a little bit more space in between the notes and allow things to sort of ring out a bit it'll sound kind of like this <laughs>
waves can also give bends more space and make them sound a lot bigger and a lot crazier. So if I take a note and I bend it, without the delay, it's going to sound like this. <laughs> which is cool if you want that tight sound. If I add some delay on it, it's gonna give it some tail off, it's gonna give it a little bit more earthy kind of sound. It's gonna sound like this. So there are other pedals out there, and this is not all, stay tuned because we're, we're, we're doing more in this video, but when I think modulations, when I think other than compression and drive and other things, these are the main things that I kind of go to. You're talking delays, reverbs, chorus, maybe a phaser if you want it, maybe a compressor. You've also got Tremolo. Now this particular Ernie Ball expression pedal, this expression trim, is set up for what they call harmonic vibrato. So you've got two waveforms that are close to each other, but they are also oscillating. So what a trim, a trim pedal is essentially an oscillation of the sound. And without getting into a ton of different details, because not only are they one, details that I don't know off the top of my head, but two, details that really in the big scheme of things are not terribly that important, guys. You just need to know, I'm assuming you're watching this video, you don't know what trim low is, okay? So with trim, you just need to know that the waveform, it does a wah, 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 up and down. So it, it'll sound similar to this. Now that's the harmonic vibrato. That may not be a good example, but I have trim on my amp. I'm going to turn the amplifier trim low on to let you know what it's kind of supposed to sound like uh, in that regard. So give me just one second. I'm going to go over here and just engage the uh, trim on the amp itself. So let's listen to this. So that gives you an idea of what trim is supposed to sound like. Pedals will offer you the same type of effect that you'll get out of an amplifier trim. Some amplifiers have tremolo circuits, and some of them don't. So if you've got an amp that doesn't have reverb or tremolo, then obviously getting into a reverb pedal or a trim, if you even want that sound, there's your option there. So delays, tremolo, reverb, chorus, phaser, compression on the end. I don't know if you can see it or not. You might be able to see it. Yeah, you can see it. This is a ditto looper, okay? A loop pedal is really just a time-based pedal. It's no different than any other type of delay or reverb. Well, maybe, maybe not so much reverb, but delay pedal. But what a looper allows you to do is have a really long delay so that you can record whatever you want. You can record a riff or a chord progression or something and then play it back and play over it. Loopers are kind of difficult to use in a band situation because your timing has to be impeccable and you cannot make a single mistake or it's going to screw everything up. But what a looper allows you to do, and I'm going to demonstrate this just real basic, and if you watch any of our videos, you know that we utilize loops all the time. Well, all the loops that we have that we do are ones that we record ourselves and then play over the top of them. So an example of that would be if I wanted to get into the territory of...
pause that for a second. So I recorded just a little chord or whatever. It can be an elaborate progression. It can be a couple of chord vamps, whatever. But catching the tail of it and the pickup of it clean is essential to making it loop over itself where it'll play cleanly. And I can now kind of play around and play over the top of that. So as a practice tool, if I just want to integrate that, actually what we'll do, we'll add a splashback of delay and I'll leave the compressor on. And then we'll, uh, we'll just tinker around and just play over the top of it. can play around a little bit, practice your licks, play over chords, and compose things. I'm going to clear that and have a little fun with it. So loopers have their place. I would say if you're a beginning guitarist and you're just getting into playing around with the guitar and you feel like you're kind of ready to get to the next level and you're ready to get into different effects, my advice, I would get a looper before I got anything else. Because with a looper, you can, you, it forces you to compose something and play it in a way where it plays back and makes sense. And then you can play over it. Once you work on your timing and your rhythm and then adding some lines on top of what you're dealing with, then you can worry about affecting the signal and making it sound better. But you have to have a basis to improve on first, and part of that basis is being rhythmically sound and being able to get your tone right and, and be able to play what you're hearing in your head. I just made that up. Okay, if, if it's cool, great. If it's not, that's fine too. But it gives me something to, to play back and listen to and know where I'm at with that sort of thing. So those are your modulations, delays. Uh, those are pretty much the main ones there. I'm going to change up the board and we're going to talk about a couple of other effects. There's more. Uh, stay tuned. Don't go anywhere. Let me change the board and we're going to redo it and show you some other stuff as well. Let's do it. All right, we're going to keep going down the rabbit hole a little bit. I've changed out the board and added some different effects, and we're going to keep talking about some different things. And guys, all of the effects I'm showing in this video, this does not encompass every single thing that you can do in terms of effects. These are probably the most common, and in maybe some cases, even some effects that are overlooked, maybe a little bit, okay? So I'm trying to, to teach you guys the real basics. This red pedal on the end is a wah pedal. So what a wah pedal basically does when the tone control on your guitar is completely closed, it has this kind of fat, muffled sound that sounds like this. The range of that knob goes all the way from muddy all the way to bright, depending on how you set up. On the top end, it sounds like this. What a wah pedal does is takes basically that type of sweep and adds it into a pedal fashion for you to sweep your foot over that frequency range and add that kind of sound in. If I take a chord and let it ring, hard to demonstrate, but you can hear that it gets this kind of whying sound in there. Where wah pedal comes in, it does that for you. So what I'll do on my 
on my guitar is I'll leave the tone dialed out a little bit so that when the pedal's in the heel down position at the lowest end of the, of the wah range, it gets from super mellow to a little bit bright, but even on the top end, it's not quite, not overpowering. I can leave that, that wah cocked all the way down and if I want. But where this pedal really comes into favor is when you rock it back and forth, you get that kind of wah sound. So the way a wah works, get the idea. Waz are used in a little bit more of your kind of funky music, get a little bit of kind of groove on, you know, it's, it's a pedal that is not for everybody. Some people like them, some people don't, but a wah pedal has a unique uh, nuance that can be added to the music um, that can help you out. All right, we're going to get into some overdrives. Uh, a lot of people that get into guitar for the first time typically, <clears throat> excuse me, typically will get into more of the overdrives first just because they're used to hearing that kind of heavier, compressed sort of sound. And I've got some varying delay, uh, varying amount of overdrive here on the floor. This is a Nobles overdrive. This overdrive is what we would consider in the guitar world to be, let's call it uh, probably a little bit more uh, transparent, okay? It's going to sound a bit like this. <laughs> favorite overdrive. The clean signal sounds like this. Add the overdrive. dig it. That's a little bit more in the, in the transparent uh, range. This is the JH, uh, JHS AT, which is the Andy Timmons uh, signature overdrive pedal. This is meant to simulate more of a Marshall, so kind of a more rocking, cranking kind of sound. <laughs> Thank you. 
get a little bit more of those kind of juicy harmonics and a little bit more of the kind of crunch and smack in there. And if we add, again, remember our, our delay from earlier, which you don't see, but I added the delay in. You get a long delay and add it on top of that. And you're getting a little bit more into... If I get into short delay, I can get into a neck pickup and get a little bit more of the... more in your face that sound is <laughs> yeah buddy <laughs> okay before we move on to the uh, next uh, overdrive sound I'm going to demonstrate a uh, Proctavia. Uh, Proctavia is an effect that was made popular by Jimi Hendrix. And basically it gives you your standard note and adds an octave on top of the note, but generally only above the 10th fret. Now this is a love pedal believe. It's a super, super simple Proctavia, uh, but it can, it's a little raunchy. It can get out of hand if you let it, but I'm going to dial back the tone a good bit on my neck pickup. Uh, they tend to work really well on the neck pickup. Let's give this a listen. And the lower registers, hear a bit of that high end. Now they're not for chords, they're not polyphonic, so you play a chord, you get some weird farty things going on. If you play simple, simple intervals, it, you can get away with it. So like a... But where they really shine is 10th fret or above, you get a nice overtone that becomes instantly recognizable when you hear it. And it sounds kind of like this. If I play up in G, I just want to mention that. That's a, that's a unique kind of effect, it's not for everybody, uh, but you can get that kind of sound. All right, we have a Wampler Plexi Drive. The Plexi Drive is going to get you, it's kind of somewhere in between the, the Andy Timmons pedal and the Noble, so it's, it's kind of medium gain to high gain, depending on how you set it up. Let's give this pedal a listen. <laughs>
Very cool. So overdrives and distortions can get raunchy. That can be gentle depending on how you set them up. Last but not least, we're going to talk about the Univibe. Univibe uses a photo cell, okay? It's basically a little glass box, and inside of this photo cell, there's a photo receptor, okay? That basically, what it does, it bounces, a, a, a diode or a light inside of the box bounces light off the inside of the box. There's a photo receptor inside of it that detects those light changes, the pulse of the light, uh, the varying intensity of the light, and it converts it into an audio signal. And it sounds kind of like this. And it's a very distinct sound. Hopefully that was an adequate explanation, but you get the idea. There's a little uh, rocker on the edge of the pedal that you can adjust the speed. If you set it to a low speed, say we bump that intensity up a little bit, and if we lower the speed, it should have kind of a wobbly sound. into more of the Jimmy territory. The Proctavia, the Univibe, even the Wah in some cases, other than, I didn't even go over fuzzes, but a fuzz is essentially just a, another extreme of the overdrive realm. Fuzzes are going to get super, super distorted. Think like Smashing Pumpkins, Billy Corgan, uh, you know, and you're right there. Obviously, Hendrix used the fuzzes quite a bit. Um, but hopefully this video points you guys in the right direction. I know it was kind of long. I know we went on and really sampled a lot, but I wanted you guys to understand just kind of the basic effects that are out there, what they do, sort of what they sound like, maybe a bit how you can use them. So some of you new guitarists out there that are maybe getting past the threshold of, hey, I'm not a beginner anymore. I want to learn, you know, a little bit about what's going on, or maybe I want to build a pedal board. You know, we get into that pedal board territory when we're ready to put together a board. So maybe this will point some of you in the right direction and keep you from wasting your money and your time uh, in terms of figuring out what effects are for you, what the effects do, and how you can apply it into your music and into your playing. So guys, we post every Monday and Friday. Make sure you tune in. Thank you so much for watching today's video. We hope you enjoyed it. Uh, make sure you click that uh, notification bell and subscribe. Make sure you're getting our videos. We'll see you guys next time. I had a lot of fun making this video and we hope that you all uh, learn something that you can take into your playing and, you know, make it your own, man. Good stuff. <laughs>